welcome to the Revere Veterans Community Show. With, in conjunction with the Revere Veterans Service and the Revere Allied Veterans Council. And today we really have a special guest. He's a captain at Logan Airport with the Fire Department. He's been with the Fire Department for 17 years, and he's done the honor flights with the veterans for three years. So welcome, Captain Potter. It's a pleasure to be here, Mr. Morris. Thank you for having me. And please <coughs> tell us all about the honor flights and the Fire Department, anything. Okay. Uh, well, uh, as Mr. Morris had said, I'm Captain Dana Potter with the Massport Rescue uh, Fire Department. And uh, I got, uh, became involved with Honor Flight New England approximately three years ago when an Honor Flight came through Logan Airport. And uh, we were there to not only assist the veterans, but we wanted to make sure that we met them and greeted them uh, and stood in honor for them while they came through our airport. We wanted to recognize them for their services. Uh, so I got, with, I got talking with the uh, founders of Honor Flight New England and uh, in working with the state police that are based at Logan Airport, our Troop F of the Massachusetts State Police, uh, we work together to provide any of the necessary services and support for the veterans for any future honor flights uh, that they wish to conduct. And uh, I had the pleasure of going on a couple of these honor flights uh, and uh, accompanying the veterans to Washington, D.C., which is the basis for why honor flight exists. Uh, they realized there was a desire for World War II veterans to see the memorials in D.C., specifically after they built the World War II Memorial. There had never been a World War II Memorial uh, constructed until the one that was built in D.C. Uh, a few years ago. So it, Honor Flight New England realized that it was expensive for veterans to fly down to Washington, D.C. to see the memorials. And that's how the chapters started uh, nationwide. And as you had explained to me earlier, Mr. Morris, uh, there will be a representative here from the local chapter, Honor Flight New England, uh, in the next coming weeks. You will have him on your show. And I'll let him talk about how the Honor Flight New England chapter was formed. And... Uh, He's got some wonderful stories as well. But uh, in any case, one of the uh, most rewarding things I've ever done uh, has been to accompany the veterans to Washington, D.C. Uh, and witness them seeing the memorials for the first time. Right, Dana. <coughs> Put yourself in my place, if I may, and let's say you went down as I'm going down. What, what is the criteria? You know, we get off the plane, uh, tell the people what happens then. Okay, good question. Uh, it's a very long day uh, for, for everyone involved with the flight. Uh, the flight happens to and from D.C. within one day. So we meet at the airport at approximately 6 a.m. In the morning? In the morning. And how do we get there? Do, uh, we picked up, do we have to get there by ourselves? Typically, the veterans get there on, the, on their own. They have oh. family members drive them. Okay. Uh, we'll meet at the state police barracks at Logan Airport. We'll get everybody registered and signed in. Everybody gets a couple goodies. We get on the bus. We then ride the bus to the uh, terminal, get everyone through the terminal and onto the aircraft. Then we fly down to Baltimore. Uh, we get off the aircraft in Baltimore, again get on buses and then drive down to the uh, uh, memorials uh, via bus. Now they're all coach buses. We'll review, uh, stop by and take time to visit uh, and pay our respects at each of the memorials. Wow. That's the World War II Memorial, the Vietnam Memorial, the Korean War Memorial. Uh, we go right by the Lincoln Memorial. We also stop at the Iwo Jima uh, Memorial and the Air Force Memorial. 
which is relatively new. Uh, then we get back on the bus, get back to uh, the airport in Baltimore, hop on the aircraft, and then fly back. By the time we get back to uh, Boston here at Logan Airport, it's approximately 10 right, to 10 11 p.m. Said, right. So it's a long day, but I will say this, is that the veterans keep us going. And, and what I mean by us is every veteran is accompanied by what Honor Flight refers to as a guardian. And we're there to assist you through the day. We realize everyone is uh, getting on in years, and they may need assistance. Some may not. They're in fantastic shape, such as yourself. But again, it is a long day. Uh, so we're there to assist you and make sure that there is nothing that you uh, need. Uh, we handle all of that for you so that you can relax and enjoy the day, viewing the memorials and not have to worry about a thing. Uh, Honor Flight feeds you. Oh, they uh, feed you too? Absolutely. Oh. And uh, um, we have wheelchairs available for those who uh, uh, request one or would like one. Uh, there's a wheelchair available for everybody. And we realize there's a lot of walking that's involved in this. And uh, um, most of the guardians get tired. So we can certainly understand that for folks that are older than us, <laughs> we could appreciate the, uh, the need for wanting a wheelchair. So uh, I got to tell you something <clears throat> when you mention folks older than us. Four of the seniors, including myself, were picked for the honor flight. We have, can I give you just a brief synopsis of Certainly. what we had? We got a gentleman, his name is Sal Santoro, mm -hmm. a World War II veteran, 99 years old, not going to be 99, is 99. He's going to need a wheelchair, and he's going to need, I believe, they have an escort? Yes, escorts will be provided for every veteran. Right. Then we mm -hmm. have another veteran, Charles Mackin, who is the custodian over there. He's a veteran of two wars, World War II and Korea. He's 88, I believe, 87 or 88. Mm -hmm. Then we have a lady, I think you said you met her, Eileen Marillo. Yes, wonderful She's woman. 88 or 89. Mm -hmm. And then you have yours truly, 85. So we're in the 80s and one in the 90s. So we are up there. Honor Flight has had uh, veterans as old as 101 for Honor Flight New England. Wow. Chapter. Uh, and uh, believe me when I tell you, they run circles around some of the rest of us. <laughs> so, um, but uh, uh, nonetheless, it is a long day. Uh, it's, and one of the reasons they do it in one day is they want to take every penny that's contributed to Honor Flight New England and get as many veterans as they can down to the memorials. Uh, we realize the importance uh, of getting everyone down there in a timely manner. <coughs> and uh, if they were to do it over the course of two days, that would involve hotel fees, more food, things of that right. nature. And medication. Medications. Uh, sometimes that becomes problematic for those that we want to bring down to uh, see the memorial. So that's why we uh, it's done in one day. And all the guardians, by the way, anyone on the flight who is not a veteran pays their way. So it is, uh, or I should say, Honor Flight New England is very, very focused on making sure every penny that's brought in through charitable donations in any way, shape, or form goes directly to the veterans. Uh, for their trip down to and from the memorials. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Joe, before we talk more about veterans and honor flights, <coughs> could you give us a little bit of, like, a, a, your fire department that you've been there for 17 years? Okay, well, I've been a fireman for 17 years, but I have not been at Logan Airport for that long. Uh, I've been at Logan Airport for approximately uh, six and a half years now. And <coughs> uh, the... Uh, Fire Department is responsible for uh, protecting all of the assets on uh, the airport property. That's all the buildings. We provide medical aid. Uh, we have a great working relationship as well with 
uh, the Boston Fire Department, Boston EMS. Uh, they do all of our physical transports of our medical patients from the airport to the local hospitals. Uh, and we have a great working relationship with the local fire departments in the area as well. Um, Revere, Chelsea, Cambridge, uh, so on and so forth. Winthrop too? Winthrop, of course, yes. So, <coughs> uh, it's a department of approximately 100 members. Uh, I'm currently serving in a capacity of uh, the captain in the fire marshal's office. And uh, we oversee fire prevention and code enforcement for all of Massport properties out of the fire marshal's office. So it's been a very re rewarding job. Uh, we run it to an awful lot of interesting folks. Oh, yeah, you said <coughs> you met some, the president or the vice president. Could you tell us about that? Well, of course, whenever there's any campaigning going on and they come to the New England area or specifically the Boston area, uh, they fly into Logan Airport. And uh, um, we typically get an opportunity to see, uh, sometimes even talk to uh, the president or the vice president or uh, Secretary of State, or uh, so on and so forth. So uh, we are fortunate in that way, I That's guess. Uh, so uh, we deal with the Secret Service in that regard as well, to some degree. Um, and occasionally we'll see some actors come through or sports figures come through, sports teams. Uh, when the Bruins won the Stanley Cup, that was a great moment when they came back. Oh, yeah. Came off the aircraft and hoisted the Stanley Cup. Uh, uh, you couldn't hear the aircraft over the cheers, I can tell you that. So uh, that was a very, uh, very memorable day. <coughs> Joe, can I, I see you have something there. Can I look at that for a second? Certainly. That's a pamphlet from Honor Flight uh, New England. Uh, Honor Flight New England can be uh, contacted uh, via the Internet. They're on Facebook. For those of you uh, who are computer savvy, um, and we urge you, uh, any World War II veteran, uh, and now any Korean War veteran is eligible for honor flight, okay? They started with World War II veterans. The priority was to get them all down to Washington. And as that uh, population, unfortunately, has decreased to the uh, point now where we want to fill aircraft with veterans, uh, we've reached out to the Korean War veterans and... Uh, so now, any World War II uh, and Korean War veteran uh, is eligible for the Honor Flight New England uh, trip. Right. I was looking at this, and it says right here, over a thousand World War II veterans are dying each day. And uh, if you go by this statistic, I think in about three, four years, most of us will be gone. Well, um, unfortunately, that's the, that's the reality of it, and uh, hence the importance and the urgency to get everybody down to uh, D.C. to see the memorials. Right. You know what I would like? Joe Byron will be coming to the Senior Center as well as the TV show on the 25th of this month. You will be there. I will be there. And the veterans out there, World War II and Korea, remember now, it's World War II and Korea. Feel free to come down to our Senior Center at 25 Winthrop Avenue and fill out an application, and you yourself may be picked, because that's how we were picked. And by the way, how are they picked, if I may ask you, Dana? <coughs> basically, basically, it's first come, first serve. Oh. Um, so as the, as the applications are, re are received by Honor Flight New England, the uh, applications are reviewed for their completeness, and if there are any questions, they contact the veteran or the family member on behalf of the veteran. We have had family members ask to have their uh, grandfather or their father, uh, or in some cases great-grandfather, um, uh, selected to get down to uh, D.C. So... Excuse me, is there any age limit on the veterans? I mean, no age limit. Or just no age limit. World War II? Yep, World War II. Yep, World War II in Korea. So... Uh, <clears throat> So it's based, on, based, uh, it's based on as soon as they get the application, it's reviewed, and then it's put into uh, um, the selection process, if you will. And as soon as they get enough veterans to uh, charter an aircraft, 
that's when they select their flights. And, and another thing on that that I think is important to mention, uh, there are two things that I'd like to make sure that we discuss today is the flights are uh, arranged for the spring and for the fall. Okay, so if somebody applies after the fall, tr uh, after the spring trip, and they're wondering why they haven't heard anything for any flights during the summer, it's off in the fall, it's because of the weather. It's, it's just too cold in the wintertime. It's too hot in the, in the summertime. summertime. Right. And we know it's a long day, so we don't want to have to worry about the, the weather making the day any harder or longer for us. And um, the second thing is, uh, and this, is, I, this I think is one of the most important things, is many of the World War II veterans, uh, or any veteran, uh, that I've accompanied and have had the honor of speaking with on these trips has been extremely grateful for having had the opportunity and been selected to get down, uh, get down there to view the memorials. And many of these veterans didn't think that it was going to be anywhere near as rewarding as it was. Um, and they had reservations about, and understandably so, opening up memories that they've had um, tucked away and, and have not considered or, or chosen to even look at since they came back home from the war. And we're all cognizant of that, and we fully aware the need, um, or the, we fully understand why veterans would want to suppress those kinds of thoughts and memories. Um, however, everyone that we've had on the trip, even the people who didn't think they were going to appreciate it or wanted to go initially, have been extremely grateful. I can tell you this, <clears throat> there won't be a dry eye in the house when you get to Baltimore and get off the airplane. The reception that you will receive in Baltimore is extremely special, and I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, you need to experience it as a veteran. you got tears and, in my and, eyes now. And it's, uh, it's heartwarming. You, veterans need to understand that there is a majority of the population that is extremely, extremely grateful for what you've all gone through for us and for the freedoms that we can enjoy today. Um, and they want to extend that gratitude to the veterans. And when you have an aircraft full of veterans coming through an airport, people stop and pause and they applaud you, they want to stop and shake your hand, they want to hug you, they want to kiss you. The reception is unbelievable. And that's the first one you're going to get, of many. You'll get them at the memorials. I've seen schools that are uh, on tour at these memorials, uh, out there for a field trip, if you will. Various age groups, elementary through high school. And they'll stop, and again, many of the veterans are in wheelchairs because of the length of the day <clears throat> and all the walking involved, as I said earlier. They'll be in wheelchairs, and these school kids will ask to sit on the veterans' laps. They give them big hugs. That's nice. And they ask them about their, you know, if they have any stories they want to share. But most of all, they, they want to make sure that they thank the veterans. And... That happens at the memorials. It happens at the airport. When you get to Baltimore, it happens at the airport. When you get back to Logan Airport, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, whatever it is. You know, at airports, there's always people in airports. If I can <clears> interrupt <throat> you for one minute. Mm -hmm. On February the 25th, a month ago be before, Joe, we went <clears> to the <throat> Whalen School. And th we were invited by the Whalen School, and six of us went. And the kids wanted to know, I spoke about World War II. We had a gentleman, Nick G. Kobe. He spoke about Korea mm -hmm. and his part in the veteran. Then we had Eileen Murillo. She spoke about a nurse at the Walter Reed Hospital for two years. Mm -hmm. And she's, um, then we had a lady, who did um, Marie Cowick, who met General Eisenhower at the USO in California. Not when he 
when he was the, in the service during World War II, when he was just the general. So we would appreciate it for them, um, the kids inviting us, and it's good to let the kids know what we do. And when you mention the kids in Baltimore coming down to greet us, mm -hmm. we're looking forward to it. Well, understandably, and I, you know, I've seen Marine units, uh, or military units rather, come back. Uh, they're either going out, um, transferring to another base, or going out for training or whatever, or they're coming back, and they'll stop, and they'll make sure that they uh, salute uh, all the veterans coming through, yes, and sir. take a moment to talk with them as soon as they all pass by. Uh, I, I could see how that would be very rewarding from a veteran to a veteran. Definitely, <coughs> definitely. Yeah. And by the way, I'd like to, just to get up the veterans for one minute, Dana, if I may ask you. I met you a year ago when we had the retirement of the flags at Logan Airport. Yes, on Flag Day. Right. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of veterans there. Yes. Could you just speak a little, just about a minute or two on that? Yes, you bet. Uh, every year at Massport uh, on Flag Day, uh, we have a retirement ceremony for, the, for any flags that are unfit for service. And we have historically have done hundreds of flags, if not over a thousand flags uh, on the, during, uh, for these retirement ceremonies. And the veterans are always present. Uh, Mr. Bua, Nick Bua, right, the Bua, Revere, Revere, Veteran Service. Revere Veteran Services, uh, he's always present. Ira and I've Ira Navaselsky. Navaselsky. Al Terminello. Yes. Uh, they've all been present. Right. And uh, that's how I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Mr. Morris in the Just first place. Mar you can call me by my first name, even though they're both the same. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, that was a joke you told me on Flag Day when we first met. So uh, that's how I had the pleasure of meeting you. So uh, uh, and we've been good friends ever since. I'm uh, honored to have met you. And, uh, but uh, yes, we still do that, uh, and we will be doing that again this year, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all there. You know, we that. learned a lot from you, Dana. I got to tell you, when I came back after the retirement of the flags, and I went to the senior center, and I said, there is an honor flight going on, and you gave me the papers to give to the people I wanted to, and I passed them out to the Korean vet. At that time, they also mentioned the Vietnam and World War II. We never heard about it, and about Three, four months ago, one of them came over, a, a veteran, and he said, did you hear anything about the flights? I says, no. And he said to me, ah, they probably forgot about us. I says, no, they probably got 50,000 people waiting, you know, first come, first serve. I'm sure you have that many. And sure enough, about four weeks ago, a uh, lady by the name of Sheila Peters, I believe her name is, the secretary up there, mm -hmm. she called me in this, on a Sunday morning, and she says, You've been picked for the honor flights. And I said to her, is this some kind of joke? Because I don't know whether it was real or not. She said no. So I called her back. She gave me the 603 number. Mm -hmm. And I called her back. And she picked us. And she picked Eileen Marillo. Like I mm -hmm. said, she picked Charlie Macon. And Joe Byron picked Sal Santoro. Mm -hmm. So it was an honor to have us picked for that. And like I say, Joe Byron will be coming down to our senior center, and I hope you will definitely come to our senior I'll center. I'll be there as well, absolutely. Right. Yeah, no, I won't miss that. That's good. So one of, the, one of the things that might possibly lead to delays <clears throat> in selection is, in this day and age, of course, everything comes down to money. Uh, and Honor Flight New England has been very fortunate in that there have been major sponsors uh, Any big companies sponsoring that, us? That have contributed for uh, paying for these flights. I'm not sure who's sponsoring this particular flight that you're going on, and that I'll be going on as well with you. Oh, good. Uh, but typically it's um, larger companies that uh, either pay the whole way or oh. pay in some you mean for the whole percentage flight? of it, pay for the entire flight. Again, um, Currently, there's such a demand that we're, we're chartering, chartering an entire aircraft, okay? So we're looking at about 80 to 90 veterans, and wow. then almost as many or as many uh, yes. guardians and support personnel uh, to accompany you on the flight. So, again, all the guardians pay their way 100%. Uh, so all of the proceeds go toward getting the veteran down to the memorials but again it all comes down to money so 
If anyone's watching this and you're not a veteran or you don't know a veteran, please feel free to, if you choose to, uh, to make a donation so that we can get our veterans down. And to where would they memorials. send that donation to if they wanted to make one? Well, honorflightnewengland.org um, is uh, probably the best way to get the contact information for that, okay, the mailing address and whatnot, okay? Or you can reach out to yourself, uh, to Morris at the Revere Senior Center. Right, 25 <coughs> Woodruff Avenue, Revere, Mass. So drop it off. Or our telephone number is 781-286-8156. Joe, before we start, I see we're going to be running out of time, so take a couple of minutes and say whatever you'd like to say. And okay. then I'll just take a minute. Okay, well, again, thank you for having me. Uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure. And, uh, again, if there's anyone out there that's interested in honor, uh, attending an honor flight, and you have reservations, whether it be the length of the day um, or what your feelings may be when you get to the memorials, please understand that every veteran that's come back from the honor flights that I've attended and that other people in honor flight New England who run the program have attended all say that every veteran has come back absolutely amazed at the support and how, uh, how much they enjoyed the experience. That's fantastic. And before we close, Joe, I mean, you know, Captain Dana, I want to thank you for coming down here. May God bless you for coming <coughs> down here. May God bless the people of Revere. May God bless our troops. And may God bless the United States of America. And thank you again for coming. And thank you for listening. Amen. Okay. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.